I want to introduce you to something that I've used for 52 years. When I was a boy, I made my first dovetail template, and this is a dovetail template that stayed with me all my life. I haven't found any that I feel work better. It works very efficiently, effectively. I'll give you a quick demonstration. I take the dovetail template, make my one in seven line or whatever pitch you want, one in seven, flip over, just keep flipping over, and you have your dovetails laid out on the piece of wood as quickly and as efficiently as that. It doesn't give you the size of the dovetail, it gives you the angle only. When you get to the end of here, this also has a square on the opposite edge and you can flip over and pull your square lines up here, just like this, and you are done. So you've got everything in one template, it works great. And I think it's a great template. So I've got thousands of people using this temple, all, a template all over the world. And I'm gonna show you how to make one. I've got my blank. This is one and a quarter wide, seven eighths thick and, and four inches long. That's plenty of length for this. Usually dovetails are not very long. So we're going to use a pencil to start with just to give us a mapping out. So we're gonna come one and a half from this end and one and a half from the opposite end, like that. We're going to square one of the lines. Now I've really worked on this blank, so I have used vernier to get my widths and thicknesses and everything so they're guaranteed parallel all the way across. Take your time with this. Square your lines all the way around. This is just to give you a visual. So I'm squaring one of these lines only because the other one is not ready to be squared. So these, ga these are going to guide my lines when I run gauge lines on here. So this one I can square across the edge only here, like that. But now we're going to make this angled here because this is where we get the, the dovetail from. So we can, we're going to angle this across to get the angle we need to develop a one in seven pitch. One in seven is between one and six and one in eight. So what I am going to do, great, this board is over seven inches wide. Square a line across the edge here. Come up seven inches. This won't do seven, so I'm gonna come up three and a half. That's going to be increments of half inch. And then I'm going to come across here, half an inch from this one. That gives me the pitch that I want for a one in seven pitch, which is a ratio. This goes across here. So there I've got my one in seven. Then I take a sliding bevel and set this to that angle. And that's the next step in laying out the template is to transfer this one in seven onto my template. This is called a dovetail template. And this goes across here. So again, there. This flips over, so we flip over this way. This angle is going in the same direction. So this angle slopes down, and when from my side, it's also sloping down. And then I square the line across the face. And this is governing the lines that I want to make with my marking gauge. So I'm going to make a, a line here and a line here, but I'm not going to use a, a marking gauge as such. I'm going to use my router. I often do this, instead of setting up a router, I'm just going to run this as my gauge line because this is actually going to be the finished depth line here. Put it in the vise if you don't feel settled because this is a cutting edge, so you have to be very careful. The depth of this is about one third. So if this seven eight stock, I don't know what one third of seven eighths, but whatever it is, you just set it to one third and it works perfectly. And it also gives a cut edge rather than the gauge, which gives you a very nice edge to work to. And you'll see how this works in a minute. 
So there we are. Like I said, be careful you don't overshoot because it is a cutting edge. Why is that slightly off there? Oh, it's me. I haven't put this is the pencil line, not the gauge line. There we go. So let me just put this in for you so you can see where we are. And that's the layout for your dovetail template. This means now that we've got these marked, we can actually put the definitive cross grain cuts in. This is our knife wall. This is the knife wall here. So I go right onto the pencil line and I make my first cut here, very definitive. This absolutely creates that wall. Here, I go onto the edge with the square, into the knife nick, and I just go the width of the cheek here and then onto the opposite side here. I don't want to go over this edge because it's going to be seen. I go into this knife wall here, slide up to it, light pass, heavy pass, and then square across. And these should line up and they will here and here. That's that one. The rest can all be done from the same edge. This has to be square. So if you were slightly out, you want this stock to register against this edge that we used as the registration edge. So just flip over, make sure you start just in case you're out. I know this won't be out. That's because I took so much time. Okay, so we've got knife walls, we've got the cheeks, everything's done. What I'm going to do is chisel into my knife wall here, steep cut, and just flick that. Same on this one. Now these, you really do want these to be dead on. And so we take our time with this. We make sure we've got sharp tools, sharp knife, even sharp pencil, make sure everything is sharp because accuracy really matters when we come to laying out and the layout tools we use. Never compromise. I'm gonna do my cross grain cut first and I'm gonna use a dovetail saw. Drop this in, push it up against the knife wall. Gently let the saw do the work. Make sure you don't go past your depth line. If anything, stay shy of your line by a millimeter because you can chisel out that internal corner very easily. Finger against the side of the plate. That just stops the saw from jumping out. And it helps you to guide it. Okay. Tenon saw now. So I cut close to, very close to my line in my case. Maybe half a mil from the line, across the top. There. I'm gonna angle this because it's easier for me to see. I'm not saying you should do this, but it makes it easier for me to see. So I'm following my gauge line, my cut line here. Like this. And that corner. Go across the top first, the end grain. The end grain is a little bit trickier. And then just follow the line. 
close to it. You can see, I think I've got the two lines, two lines still visible, flip around, come from this side now. Still staying catty corner, like that. And then down here, listen to it now, pressing hard against the plate here, the, the, the scrap piece of wood to make sure it keeps the saw registered against the, the face I've cut. And it also slows my cut down slightly. So I'm squeezing here now. Uh, I'm prepared to break off that last little bit rather than cut into the groove. Drop my hand here. I like the advantage I get from this registering against the vice jaw. So I'm leaving it there this time, dropping my hand inside here. Squeeze. left this little cheek on here, a little bit on each one of these because I want this square edge. I want to chisel down this face here. The only, the best way to do it, it's not the only way to do it, is to chisel in using the knife wall to rest my chisel on. So my chisel is resting right on this knife wall here. And then I just rock the chisel till it won't go any further. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this up and put it gently in the vise here, just so it's resting here, because this I want you to see this. The registration is the very edge of the cut there, the, the chisel cut, the uh, saw cut. So I'm going down this face and using the gauge line from the router. I don't want to crunch this edge, so I'm going very gently, but this is... You can do it the way I did the first one. I'm just paring those fuzzy edges left from the saw. Right on the very edge. That gives me that beautiful, crisp, clean edge. And here, I'm going to go in here just to chisel up the face, this is not my finished cut yet, just so I can lift out these fibers. There we go. And I've got these nice crisp edges that I want for my dovetails. This will affect the dovetails, you see. So there you have, have it. These are nice and smooth, slick. Here I've got another little bit here to take out. And I could pop this with the chisel and with the hammer to get that edge. So now this is ready for me to do the last stage. I'm going to just take a, a knife, because these are already down, just into that inside corner like that, just to sever the fibers, like that. I'm going to put this in the vise now. This is actually very smooth and I could accept that just as it is. Keep 
keep your chisel pointing towards the sky. You don't want to go all the way through. So pointing upwards. So I'm going right into the very cut line. Flip it round. Do this while I'm here. I'm just using a scraper to scrape up the surfaces so I go right in the corner. And the same on this one here. So I'm just scraping those surfaces to get them slick. further off my line there. Pretty good there. Feels smooth. So I'm starting in the corner. I'm not going all the way through on that close out cut. I'm just going here. And then on the last one, I pull it all the way through. And that gives me that nice surface. So I have a little bit of pairing on this one. Just missed my, hopefully I'm going with the grain. And it's not. Because I can feel the resistance, I'm going to come in from the side here. It's going to depend on your wood as much as mine. I thought I was in the groove before, but I wasn't. That's it, that's better. I don't know if I would sand this or whether I would take a file probably to most of these edges here, even here, the end here. Just to break the corners just a little bit because they will break if you don't do it and it's better to have a controlled aris on here. Take the aris off, should I say. So there you have it. That's a tool you can add to your uh, tool collection. Use it throughout your lifetime. It's a great tool. I've used it all my life. I hope you'll use it throughout all your life too.